come see us at our next convention appearance, which will be Wizard World New Orleans, January 4th through the 6th, where we'll be hosting panels, plus we'll have our DVDs with us as well. Get your tickets now at wizardworld.com and see you there. Let's just get it all out in the open up front. A Little Piece of Heaven is a movie in which Kurt Cameron kidnaps children by convincing them that they're dead so that they will play with his mentally challenged sister on a farm. Oh, you thought Kurt Cameron already saved Christmas in 2014 with an empty cup of crazy? Oh, no. He saved Christmas 23 years earlier in a 1991 made-for-TV movie directed by, of all people, Mimi Letter, whose work can even be seen this year with On the Basis of Sex. The craziness of this movie can even be felt from the box cover. It's sort of like Instant Family. You know, if Wahlberg dressed like an angel and kidnapped orphans against their will. Their eyes are screaming, help us! Oh, uh, but this is destined to become a holiday classic. The movie is 27 years old. It ain't gonna happen! I haven't seen a movie this crazy since Old Fashioned, and honestly, this movie is even more batshit insane! This is a movie that's so off of its meds that even Miss Velma would deem it too crazy for her loaded, pistol-filled Christmas special. So if your holidays are really lonely and you want to drug some kids to take home with you, this is a movie for you. Seriously. That's a word I'm going to be using a lot in this review. Like all great Christmas films, it starts out in a cemetery. Kurt Cameron plays Will, who, yeah, has some problems. Dad, if I'm going to be a pig farmer, then I don't have to go to college. But you'd be a better pig farmer if you did, Will. <laughs> These are the life hurdles that keep me awake at night. Will lives with his adoptive father and his sister, Violet, who, uh, I think is foreshadowing to us what kind of performance we're gonna get here. I forgot to tell you something. I ate two whole pieces of Will's birthday cake. Oh, no. <laughs> She's going full Ghost of Christmas present. Now get in the back of the truck with the fucking dog, and don't shit all over the truck bed like you did on the ride up. You're holding on to me awfully tight. I don't mind riding in the back, but could you take your thumb out my pooper? The orphanage they grew up in is the beloved Harry Hamlin house. Aw, oh, damn, they just got done sniffing glue before we arrived. Who runs this place? <laughs> Come on up. You were in Young Frankenstein. And the Oogie Loves. Will, tell your sister I'm not the fucking dog. Let me go so I can breathe. Now let's put her to work peddling the generator so we can watch Wheel of Fortune. This movie is just made up of brain farts. Did you know that when an elephant herd finds an orphan calf, they don't always adopt the lost baby? Finally, a movie that prepares me for bar trivia night. And get back to work. Thought you wanted to stay in shape. I do. Petal. Yes, sir. From the director of Deep Impact. Although there is something satisfying about seeing Kirk Cameron shovel hog shit. <sighs> Vi, come on, you're supposed to be helping Dad. I got bored, so me and Charlotte took a walk. Charlotte and I. Yeah. Don't be that guy. And here's how I'd want to find out that my adoptive dad just died. How come Papa's sleeping in the back of the truck? This is all preparing Will for his book, Riding the Bus with My Dead Dad and My Sister. And all Paul left us was a camper that runs solely on hot cocoa. What did he leave Violet? I look like real fairy princess. <laughs> Take that off! It's a Christmas movie! Oh, uh, wait, we have to get through Thanksgiving first. Try not to be a Debbie Downer. Let's go to heaven, see Mama and Papa. 
If you want an award so bad, just name the character Emmy. There's only one thing that gives Will joy in this world. <laughs> Watching his handicapped sister fling shit on herself. So here's the pills to knock your sister out. We got tired of just hitting her on the back of the head with a sock full of oranges. The hell kind of town is this? This is like Northern Exposure if it were hit with a gas bomb of depressants. <laughs> Good thing you did something about that, hero. Name is, uh, Olander. Always slapping at her kids. And <laughs> we just let it happen. Remember to let your sister say her prayers before you knock her out with the pills. Dear God, please bless Grandpa and Grandma Loomis, Grandpa and Grandma Sutton. Mmm, she's praying to the God of Cringe. Now Will can relax with some quality Christmas programming. Approximately every 13 seconds in our nation, a child under the age of 18 is beaten, sexually molested, or otherwise abused by its parents. Dear God, why am I watching this channel? Then he gets a bright idea. The news has inspired him to fix the overcrowded orphanage problem by kidnapping children. What the fuck is with religious wackos doing illegal shit inspired by the news? Some of the kids are getting transferred to a slave labor camp, apparently. So Kirk has to read through their files to find out which ones are getting shipped away. Alright, how much does this kid weigh? Are you planning on eating them? I wonder if those tranquilizer pills he was given are gonna factor into anything. Yep. This movie needs an adult! Or at least an adult with a functioning brain. Violet, you're not gonna be lonely anymore. You won't have to help me with the chores either. Because I'm gonna kidnap some children so they'll play with you. <laughs> Seriously! This is just like raising Arizona if it were completely unaware of itself. Will then breaks a window so the children, who were apparently already awake and standing at the door, can just mosey on outside and play with chickens. This place should be shut down. This means he can safely sneak inside undetected and kidnap the child that he drugged. Ha ha ha! Seriously! <laughs> Black. Um. Oops. Eh, I guess you'll do anyway. Off to my hog farm. So now you'll have someone to play with, and I'll have more help with the chores. A little piece of heaven. A movie where Kurt Cameron kidnaps a black kid and makes him work on a farm. The kid is named Salem, and he has priorities. Where are my cards? Cards? You cool, whoever you are. Unless you the one that stole my cards. Pardon me? This movie fulfills Kirk's lifelong dream of making a loony bin different strokes. You retarded? No, he's my brother, and I'm developmentally disabled. That's a retard. <gasps> hey, that's five minutes in internet jail. Sorry, kid, you're trapped in here with us now. Can I call you Webster? Kirk has the perfect way to get the kid to stay. The place that you went to last night had a fire. You're dead. And now you're in heaven. Say what? Say what? Thank you. Yep, he convinces the kid that he's dead and that heaven is being forced to work on a hog farm and shovel shit with Kurt Cameron. Here's the Twilight Zone twist. <laughs> this isn't heaven. I'd have questions too. Where's the other African Americans? Oh, uh... Kid, this is a Kurt Cameron movie. You're lucky you're here at all. The way that this kid is acting, I wouldn't be surprised if he grew up to be this guy. Ooh, work, Holy Spirit. Ha! Can I get an amen? I see yeah! The scales are falling off. Glory! Ah! Glory! Mm. 
Kirk Cameron, the biggest voice of the black community since Black Angus. But the worst thing about him is still being a grammar Nazi. You might have to move around to other sections like... Dang, that ain't a whole lot different from where I came from. Isn't a whole lot different. Say that to me again, Mike Seaver. Naturally, the authorities are investigating this. No shit! Mr. McKevin? Jack Daniels, FBI? <laughs> a movie with a plot so insane that it needs a bottle of booze to investigate it. This case is so dire that he takes time out to watch a better Christmas movie. Hope Jack finds them before Violet accidentally kills the dog. The dog's only there because Will convinced him that all dogs go to heaven. I had no idea Jamal from Empire had such a rough upbringing. He grew up being assaulted by a pig and had to hang out with Kurt Cameron. Anyway, Will hides the phones in the basement so Jamal can't use them. Ha ha ha! Dinner time! Our father, who art possibly very nearby, maybe even as close as the next farm. Try this plotline with another religion and see how Kurt Cameron approves of it. Go ahead, I dare you. And heaven should only be White Castle burgers, goddammit. Look, has anyone ever mentioned the golden rule to you? It's about treating other people the way you want them to treat you. So Kirk wants to be drugged and kidnapped? And this still isn't enough for Will's very own Norma Bates. Hey. I want a girl to play with. Oh. You said I wouldn't be lonely anymore. And then his mentally challenged sister convinces him to kidnap a girl because she doesn't like boys. <laughs> Seriously! If you don't get me a girl, I won't play heaven with you anymore. It's at this point when I wonder if a movie itself can be put in prison. So of course he dresses like an angel in order to kidnap the girl that he saw being slapped around earlier, but he definitely wants God's approval first. So I'm gonna need one more. Uh, and I promise this will be the last one. There shouldn't have been a first one! Again, try this shit in real life. For years, we've all been calling Saving Christmas crazy, but who knew that in that movie, Kirk was toned down? This shit is way crazier! Well, my name's Will, and I'm your guardian angel. No, you're not! You see, you died last night. Your appendix burst. And I've come to take you to heaven. <laughs> this is starting to not be funny anymore. Kirk Cameron is not well, and for 30 plus years, no one has gotten him help. And then he tells her that her parents died in a bank robbery. She's not being abused anymore, but bad news, she lives with a religious nutbag who dresses like an angel and kidnaps children. But at least she can pick her own name. Could, could my name be Princess? Sure. How about a last name? Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. Here's a better idea. Maybe you should have called child services or stepped in when you saw this shit happen to begin with. But no, convincing her that you're an angel who apparently still has to drive a truck. Oh no, that's the best way to handle this. Oh, and that's Lacey Chabert. No wonder she started using Christian Mingle. There's too many people like this in the real world. His house is totally heaven too. Look at how he decorated it. Kirk, could you step in here for a moment? And how is this kid not putting it together? Hey, how can this disease in heaven? Well, no place is perfect. Even heaven couldn't get rid of the swine flu. Now take this gun and start shooting birds away from the pigs. Our heaven is their hell. On the plus side, now Violet has an abused child to play with. What happened to her face? I live in a big house and I fell down the stairs. There's no need to lie in heaven, or a house that your kidnapper has convinced you is heaven. Unfortunately, there's a nosy but attractive neighbor. Oh shit, it's my real life wife. She's gonna kill me when she finds out I've kidnapped children again. Just don't act like this in front of her. Look, uh, there's some stuff that you don't know about yet, all right? Dangerous stuff. 
<laughs> yeah, kid, what are you trying to do? Get rescued? Don't you ever I got do no that measles. again. They're angels' measles. You can't see them and they don't itch. Then why we gotta because cut? Because they're very contagious. Heaven is a place where you have to shoot diseased birds away from pigs, and angels will also give you diseases, so you probably shouldn't look at him. Seems legit. This holiday season, just say no to Kirk Cameron and kidnapping, and say yes to wearing this limited edition shirt with me and Lloyd. Get yours now at Zazzle.com slash the cinema snob. Considering there is an FBI agent investigating this, why isn't this movie a thriller? Only in a Kirk Cameron movie would a character like this be the hero. Then he convinces the neighbor to leave by saying that all the kids in the house have measles. Uh, I left my number in the basket. Oh, right. Yeah, good. Leave him your number. What, are you upset that Ted Bundy didn't call you back? The music is telling me that this is supposed to be wholesome, but it's not. Let's use the creepy music for a scene we just saw because, well, we have to. Don't you ever do that again. They're angels' measles. You can't see them and they don't itch. Then why we gotta cut? they're very contagious. Most appropriate use of the creepy music ever! Oh, then they put it together that it may be Will who kidnapped the kid because he was there that day and had a key. No fucking shit! And get to the house fast! My daddy hit me. I, I could hug you. No! All this time, we thought we were teaching Violet, but it was truly Violet who was teaching us. Then Will leaves to see the hot neighbor and puts Violet in charge. I hesitate to ask what's the worst that could happen. Eh, fuck it. Might as well drive to investigate this shit instead of calling back. Considering the racehorse pace of the investigation so far, couldn't it possibly wait till morning? No, it can't fucking wait! Now back to our special programming, when Cameron's flirt. Would I'd you like, like to have, have a family? family? <laughs> <laughs> that's on your sweater. Made you look. You think that's hot? Wait till you see him do the worm. <laughs> Bang me on a Santa sleigh immediately. Oh, thank God, the feds are here. No! You make sure she stays quiet! Mm, this is gonna be the kind of movie where they get to keep the kids at the end, isn't it? Cause Will got the measles. Maybe I, I do too. Well, that's all I needed to know. I totally believe you. Have a good night, ma'am. You've got probable cause. Get the fuck in there. What's stopping you? Ed, the prints on Salem's file don't match anyone else's. Violet wouldn't lie. Fuck all of you. So she told the kids the FBI were bad angels because she's pissed that Will has a love interest. Seriously. You are a bad Angel, go away! I'm not an angel. You can't have well. Violet, Will. Violet! Gun. Should I get the gun? No! Who's that? You see what you're marrying into? Anyway, kids, she's not a bad angel, but she may be a spy. That's actually what he says. So I'll explain later, but uh, we may have to go away for a little while. We're gonna need guns. Do not give anyone in this movie weapons! Then they put together a survival kit to avoid the FBI that the kids think are bad angels who they should avoid. I'm sorry, I constantly need to remind you that when I'm describing the plot of this movie, I'm not being sarcastic. This is actually what's happening. Here, kid, hide down here and keep the fucking gun handy. Use it to shoot Will for the love of God. At least Will tells him the truth now. Salem, there's something that you need to know. You can say that again. Stop being lighthearted! It's cool. But you ain't the devil. Is this ain't hell? Oh, no. No, no, no. Oh, no. He's definitely the devil. Oh, and now they search the house when everyone's gone. Incompetent assholes who are still the smartest ones in the movie. Something must be terribly wrong. Will you get off it, Edwina? He's a sickie. He kidnaps children. Okay, this may be one of the craziest of these movies, but at least it does have one character who is talking sense. 
Even heaven has a shitty roach motel that we can stay in, complete with angel roaches. Then Will's love interest comes in, and Violet has another jealousy freak out. <laughs> yep! She's totally cool with all this illegal shit and even keeps the kid calm in the bathtub, because that's what the script says to do. Sure, we could show the police wanting to haul his ass in jail. Instead, read this letter from his birth mom as if I'm supposed to feel sorry for him. Oh, and his birth mom was blind, which she said made it easier for her to give him up because she couldn't see him. Giving you up is a lot harder than being blind. Boy, do I not give a shit about this. Thankfully, he gives himself up before he unleashes the movie Fireproof onto the world. He was a good family. They're gonna have to take us like that. Finally, a movie that's inspirational to the Branch Davidians! Now we get to see him not go to jail because of, uh, let's call them idiot character witnesses. But he ain't no criminal. Will is, well, he's a proper homeboy. Kirk Cameron being called a homeboy is like a slice of Wonder Bread being called a Caramello. I don't think Will is so weird. He has a really nice house. Thanks, Princess Stockholm. Your words will be taken into consideration. Anyone else? Mom and Papa are dead. You're not getting an Emmy. Eh, you're white. This is just some good old-fashioned bad joshing. So as payment for your crime, you will open the doors of your home to those less fortunate than you and serve them as friend, workmate, and teacher. Fuck you! The same judge was later fired for sentencing Bill Cosby to drug more women. He's just a precocious youngster. God, it's great being a white Christian teen heartthrob. You won't believe the shit I got away with in this movie. You make a good papa. <laughs> Merry Christmas, and don't eat the brownies or I'm gonna snatch you away in your sleep. Believe in Jesus. <sighs> This is a movie that aired on national television. Oh, sorry, as the box informs me, an Emmy-nominated movie. Granted, it was just for musical score, which sort of makes sense, because the only reason this is a feel-good drama is because of the musical score. Never before have I seen a movie that with just a few minor edits and a change of score, it could instantly be turned into a thriller. This movie is like the Gone Baby Gone Christmas special. The only way it would be crazier is if it actually took place in Jonestown. The movie ends with a judge sentencing him to start a cult. Oh, but it's destined to become a holiday classic. That is, if you actually are kidnapped and forced to watch this film. Considering it's written by the script supervisor of movies like Laser Blast, Incredible Melting Man, Beverly Hills Cop, and Cannonball, I wonder if it originally did start out as a thriller until some crazy ass said, Oh no, I identify with these people. Kirk and company would take a movie like Natural Born Killers and turn it into the Waltons, yet still keep the murder spree. And I cannot be happier that this movie exists because... Boy, was this episode a roller coaster ride. I feel sorry for whatever movie is in next week's episode because it's gonna be pretty lame in comparison. You can do this anytime you want. Mm -hmm.